I'm Amelia and I'm really looking forward today to sharing some of the things that I have been making in February. Hi, my name's Amelia and welcome to this week's video. I love to make garments for my handmade wardrobe and to share those with you, so I do hope if that's something you're interested in as well that you'll stay tuned to today's video. If you are new to my channel, welcome, it's lovely to have you along. If you do fancy subscribing at the end of the video, I would so appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell, and then you'll be made aware of when I release future videos. And to those of you who are returning subscribers, thank you so much for coming back, and it's great to have you here as well. So I am wearing one of the garments that I did get made in February on today's video, and I will be sharing the details about that later on in the video, so do stay tuned for this make. But I thought I would start with one of the patterns I was really excited to make this month, which was the No Me Patterns ME2003 which is a cardigan and skirt pattern for knit fabrics by Alyssa Threads for Nomi Patterns. Now, this was something I was so excited to sew up. I had waited for this pattern to be released in the UK. I bought it straight away as soon as I saw it had been released in the UK, and I had some fabric set aside specifically for making this pattern. And that was a black merino jersey fabric that I bought from the fabric store when I was there in New Zealand over Christmas. So I knew I wanted to use this fabric for the cardigan because I thought a black cropped cardigan would fit really well into my handmade wardrobe. So one of the great things about Nomi Patterns is it does have a wide size range. This one comes in sizes 8 to 26. So that's a bust of 31 and a half inches through to 48 inches. And there are clear finished garment measurements on the inside of the pattern, so that's great. Another great thing with these patterns is that the pattern designers themselves have put YouTube sew-alongs up here on YouTube, and I will make sure to link Alyssa Threads sew-along in the description box below, along with all of the other fabric and pattern details that I mention in this video. Just as an aside, I will also put chapters down in the description box, so if there are any makes or parts of the video that you wish to skip through, please do just pop down there and hopefully you'll be able to skip through to the next part of the video with content that you are more interested in watching. So back to the cardigan. I did watch the YouTube sew along because unfortunately the instructions are as ever with the big four somewhat difficult to work through and I did at times find them quite confusing so I am very grateful that there was a sew along over on the YouTube channel. I thought that was really helpful. I also did appreciate the finished garment measurements, however as I have found with many other big four patterns it still came out a lot bigger than I thought it would. Now in particular I found the fit of the cuffs really interesting. Now this is just a pattern choice but it's something that I didn't prefer. They actually come out quite oversized so instead of being snug around your wrist like most cuffs are, this one is quite loose and it has about probably two inches of ease around your wrist. Now that's not something that I actually prefer. If I'm wearing a cardigan, I want to be warm and I want it to fit snugly around my wrist so that the breeze doesn't blow into my cardigan. So if I were to make this one again, I would definitely be making those cuffs smaller so that they fit snugly around my wrists. Now I chose to make the view with the sleeves that were set in here at the top and then they are gathered in at the wrist. Now, the pattern just said to stretch these to fit, however there was far too much fabric to stretch to fit into even these cuffs that are slightly larger. So I did end up putting gathering threads in those ends of the sleeves and gathering them into the cuff as you would normally gather larger pieces of fabric into smaller ones. So that was something that I did differently from the instructions. I really like this frill here. But if I'm honest, I do not love the fit of this cardigan and I'm so sad because I was really excited to sew this pattern. It comes up extremely cropped. Now I did check the garment measurements before I sewed it and I thought it would be okay so probably the fault is on my part here but I could definitely do with at least another inch maybe two and I can't help comparing this to another cropped cardigan that I made earlier on in my sewing journey which is the Jennifer Lauren handmade juniper cardigan. Now that's another cropped cardigan with this v-neck detail and I just think the band that she uses in that pattern around the neck area is slightly thinner and I think that the look of that looks more polished and it just seems to fit better. There's a lot of excess fabric here that sort of rolls around when you're wearing it that I don't love. And the other thing is just the fit of the Juniper Cardigan and again I don't know if because they've got the Juniper Cardigan has different sleeve inserts. I think it's called a saddle sleeve where the sleeve sort of comes over the shoulder and then extends down. So that might impact on the fit of the cardigan but I just think Comparing cropped cardigans to cropped cardigans, there is one of these two patterns I will definitely make again, and I don't think it's going to be this one. 
In terms of the fabric, I absolutely loved sewing this merino jersey. I was actually quite worried to begin with because I haven't sewn with a merino jersey before and I thought it would be really, really difficult to work with and it just wasn't. It went beautifully under my machine. I did use a Mariflex thread and my overlocker to sew this up and it came together very easily, which was really, really nice. The fabric is beautiful to wear as well, very soft and very warm. So. I think I can wear this one if I wear it over perhaps dresses that are longer line it just sits above my natural waist and that will be okay if I'm wearing like a longer line dress it doesn't look great open so I don't think that's an option unfortunately but I can hopefully wear it over some of my pinafore dresses as long as they don't have a waist seam because this does sit about an inch or two inches above my natural waist so it looks a bit strange if the dress has a waist seam. It doesn't seem to quite work for me with my high-waisted jeans either, unfortunately. It's even a little bit too short for that. But I do want to wear it because I love the fabric. It's very snugly warm, so it will stay in my wardrobe for a while. I'm going to experiment with the other pieces that I have, and hopefully it will get quite a lot of wear over the spring, and I will reevaluate it when I come to next autumn as to whether it's going to stay in my wardrobe or, unfortunately, go and be given to somebody else who might wear it more. So after I made that, I was feeling a little bit downcast, I'll be honest, because I really, really loved that pattern, I loved that fabric, and I was very excited for that. Now, don't get me wrong, I do think that it's a well-designed pattern, and perhaps if you have a shorter torso, or if you make the longer line version, it might be perfect. I think I just felt frustrated that it hadn't turned out quite the way that I hoped it would. So to give myself a bit of a sewing boost, I decided to sew a pattern that has become a tried and true, and that is the new craft house everyday top. Now, I have made the dress a couple of times before and I absolutely love it. I haven't made the top before. So I decided to use the leftover merino wool jersey and make a top. Now this isn't made for knit fabrics. This top is designed for woven fabrics. So whilst I say I made the new craft house everyday dress out of the merino wool jersey, I didn't quite. Let me show you what I did. So here is my top. I'm very excited about this one. It's definitely not going to be worn until the spring or the summer, but here it is. Now, what I used from the new craft house pattern actually was just the sleeves. And this was one of my make nines, actually. I had this tulle fabric left over from a bomber jacket that I made with my friend, who is Amelia Allen Sews here on YouTube and on Instagram. We made a bomber jacket from this tulle and I had some left over and it's just so bright and colorful and gorgeous. I couldn't see it languishing in my remnants pile any longer. So I decided after the cardigan to just have a play around. And I always find that helps with my sojo, just playing with fabric, letting my creativity go and just having fun with sewing. Now the base pattern that I decided to use for this top was the Iris Tea by Forget Me Not Patterns. Now I am an ambassador for Forget Me Not Patterns, so I do get access to their patterns for free, but this is one that I had actually bought prior to becoming an ambassador for Forget Me Not Patterns because I just love the fit of this t-shirt. It's a really well drafted t-shirt pattern. I really like where the neckline sits on me and actually the original Iris T has really interesting sleeve pleat details which I do love. I knew I wanted to try a new craft house sleeve with this tulle. So what I did was I used the remnants of this merino wool jersey to make the body of the iris tee because it fits so beautifully and I made this in a size 36 which does fit with my measurements. So what I did have to do slightly differently on this is I did have to cut the back with the grain going across this way which isn't ideal but it's fine because the front is cut with enough and there's enough stretch in this fabric that it goes on beautifully and it's not a particularly fitted t-shirt on me so it does work just fine. And it just meant that I could use up all of the scraps of this beautiful merino jersey, which was important to me. So that's that really. I just used those lovely sleeves. I decided to use the merino wool jersey for the cuff on the sleeve, partly because it is tulle, so it is slightly scratchy because of the embroidery. It actually is fine when you wear it because the puff of the sleeve holds it away from your body a little bit. But where it is tight to my body, so at the cuff, I did decide to use the merino wool jersey just so that is a little bit more comfortable and not so scratchy. And I really, really love this top. It's definitely one that's not going to be worn yet, but it did help me just get that creativity back after the first sewing project, which didn't go quite as I wanted it to. So sewing all of that black fabric, especially at night, which is when I tend to sew, can be quite tricky, especially as I am at the moment in a rather dark corner in my lounge. 
And so I was very thankful to be able to use my Serious Readers lights, which you will just see up here behind me. Now, Serious Readers have very kindly sponsored the next part of my video, and I will just briefly give you a little update on how I'm finding working with my Serious Light. So I was very kindly gifted a high definition floor light, which does use their daylight wavelength technology. And I have found this really invaluable in my sewing practice. Now these lights are pricey, but I do think you get what you pay for. And by that, I mean it is a really well-made, very sturdy and very hard wearing light. And I have great faith that this light is going to last me many, many years as I continue sewing and crafting my handmade wardrobe. It has a very strong and flexible arm, which I've found really useful. I often sew here at this desk behind me, but then there are times when I'm doing hand sewing where I would just pop over here and sit on the couch, especially on the evenings when we're watching television, and I can just do some hand sewing over here and just turn the light around and work on the corner of the couch. And it's just so flexible and easy to move the head of the lamp to exactly where I want it. Now these lamps are handcrafted here in the UK and I do think the quality and the high standard of craftsmanship are worth paying for. Now what I've found particularly useful recently is the way that this light has an adjustable beam. So I actually make the beam quite wide when I'm working at my sewing machine, but when I'm doing joyous tasks like unpicking black seams or when I am hand sewing, I can actually narrow the definition of that light so it's really small and intensely focused on the small area that I am working with at that time. The other thing I've really liked is the fact that you can dim the light or make it as bright as you like. So sometimes when I'm sewing in the day, I just don't need as much light as this can produce, as fantastic as that is. So I can dim that to just make it slightly less bright when I don't need that full brightness. However, at night, I do think that that daylight technology is fantastic. It does mean that I'm working in a light that is more natural feeling and it's just more conducive to a happy and healthy sewing experience. Now, if you're interested in purchasing one of these serious lights for yourself, Serious Readers have very kindly given me a code to share with you all, and that is SR219. Now, if you use this code when you purchase a Serious Light from their Serious Lights range, then you will receive a compact light which is valued at £150. Now, this little light has been fantastic. I have used it a lot when I've been knitting my socks on the couch at night. I have found this little compact light really, really handy to have. So if you use that code SR219, you will get that light included for free. I've certainly found my light to be just so helpful and in fact I wouldn't be without it now. It just has made such a difference to my sewing practice. So after sewing all of that black fabric, which whilst I loved that new craft house everyday top, I was ready to be done with black. I don't actually wear a lot of black. So I decided to move on to something very bright and colourful and that is this top here. Now I actually made this top over half term when I was on holiday with my children and you can see this top coming together if you'd like to watch that in a week in my handmade wardrobe video which I'll pop a link to up here. So this top was in my make nine that is to say I've had this cotton seersucker which is a pigeon wishes fabric in my stash for maybe a couple of years now and I just haven't been brave enough to sew with it because it's so delicious and I didn't know what to make. When I made my two new craft house everyday dresses, I thought this fabric would work so well for a dress, but I didn't have enough fabric to make the dress, and so I decided to give the peplum top a try. Now, normally I don't love a peplum top, but I think because of the seam, the bust seam, which sits quite high on this top, I thought it might just about suit me, and it does. I absolutely love this top. The new Craft House Everyday Top has a great inclusive size range and it is both a dress and a top pattern. Now it is quite an oversized fit so I did size down one size from where my measurements placed me and it is fine. It does fit slightly more snugly across the bust but that's a fit that I particularly like. I didn't want it to be too blousy over the bust and then there's plenty of room you can see here to get it on and off. Now normally this top is fastened with a button at the back here but what I decided to do for this version is to extend this bias bound neckline right around the back and to make those ends long enough to tie in a bow at the back which is just another fun way to finish off this top. I absolutely adore these sleeves. The seersucker gives them such a nice shape and a bounce and I cannot wait to wear this one 
in the summer. So I think I'll be resting this pattern for a little while now, although I can't make any promises because I do just love it so much. But yes, I think I'll be taking a break from the new craft house top for a little while, and I am going to share something different with you now, which is a knit top. Now this top was one that I made for a pattern test, so I'm really excited to share it with you because I had so much fun putting this one together. Now this is a pattern by French Navy and it is their new Tarifa tee, which I believe comes out this weekend. And I was very excited to be on the tester team for this pattern. You'll know that I've made several French Navy patterns before. I absolutely love the drafting of their patterns. I love the fit of them. I really enjoy the instructions. They are such delightful patterns to sew. I think this month has been a real month of ups and downs for me. There have been patterns that I've had absolute joy and delight putting together because the instructions are great and the process has just been so much fun. And there are others where I just have not enjoyed the process of putting the garments together. I absolutely loved putting this one together. Now you'll see the lines on this are so interesting. This is no ordinary t-shirt. So it has a front panel that has these side front and back panels that you can see here. And then the sleeves are sewn on with those side panels. The construction is so interesting. It's unlike any t-shirt I have put together before. Now it is a slightly boxy fit and I know that the slightly boxy fit sometimes doesn't look great on my figure. So I did size down one size and I am so happy with the fit. Now I have to say I do often make size C in French navy patterns, so I did go with size C. So I am on the large end of those measurements, but it fits me really, really nicely, as you'll see in the pictures. The other thing I love about this pattern is this dipped hem. Now it dips slightly at the back and it's slightly raised here at the waist and it just looks so elegant when it's on. If a t-shirt can look elegant, this one definitely does. Now you'll notice that I made this from a striped jersey. I had so much fun putting this together and playing with the stripes. You'll see I made them horizontal here for the body of the t-shirt and then I put them vertically on the sleeve pieces and on these insertions into the side of the t-shirt. And then I put them going vertically here with the neckband. So I had really a lot of fun playing with the stripes on this t-shirt. I used a Minerva cotton jersey for that make. Now I am a Minerva brand ambassador, but this was not gifted to me. I bought this one because I was gifted previously another striped cotton jersey by Minerva, which I love wearing. It's so comfortable and it was beautiful to sew with. So when I was thinking about this pattern and what fabric I wanted to use, I knew I wanted to use a striped fabric so that I could play around with a pattern placement and so I did decide to go back to Minerva and buy myself some more of this striped jersey because it has washed and worn so well so it was beautiful to sew with I definitely can recommend it as a striped jersey it it just sews up beautifully it's got great stretch and recovery and it's very very comfortable and soft to wear so I'm looking forward to getting that out in my spring wardrobe sometime soon. So as you can see, I'm getting very excited about the warmer weather and a few of my makes so far this month have been a little unseasonal. However, the next one I'm going to share with you is definitely seasonally appropriate and it is the Mile End Sweater by Closet Core. Now I did wear this in a previous video so you will have seen a sneak peek of this before but here it is. This is my Mile End Sweater and I made it in a Mind the Maker sweatshirt jersey. I think this is their Indigo or Indigo Night colorway and then this is the Rosewood colorway. I made two different sweatshirts in each of these fabrics and I had enough fabric left over to make a Mile End Sweatshirt. So you can see here is the front and it's got really interesting seam lines coming down here and then into the hem band, which was lots of fun to put on. Now the pattern has fantastic notches and instructions. So although this looks really complex, it comes together really beautifully. I cannot fault Closet Core's instructions. They are always very clear and easy to follow and you get really great end results as well. Now the back, as you can see, again is color blocked. I've got the back bodice piece up here and then the rosewood color forms the majority of the back. And then I use that like you saw, to go around the sides towards the front of the sweatshirt. Now for closet core patterns, I fall into a bust size 8, a waist size 10, and hips size 12. Now I did actually size down, this sweatshirt is a cropped oversized fit, and I wanted it to be oversized and comfortable, but I didn't want to feel like I was swimming in fabric. So I did decide to size down, and I made a straight size 6, 
which is fine for my measurements. There's still plenty of ease. It's not too tight. It fits beautifully. It's oversized without feeling too big and boxy. The only change I might make for next time is to lengthen the sleeves by one inch. As it is, they sit exactly on my wrist. Obviously, if I reach up, then they come down a little bit. But I do like just having a little bit more room in my sleeve, so I just feel really cozy and comfy in my jumpers. So what I'm going to do for next time is just lengthen that sleeve by one inch just to give me slightly more wiggle room. I love those colours together so much. It was really, really good fun putting that together. I did lots of sketches and using coloured pencils beforehand to work out what was going to go where. And then ultimately I was guided by how much fabric I had left as well and what I could get out of the remnants of those two sweatshirt fabrics. Now once I had finished that jumper, I still had remnants of my remnants, if you will, left over. Now I couldn't bear to throw them away. That sweatshirting is definitely on the pricier side, but I have found that it washes well, it wears well, it's very, very snugly to wear. But I didn't obviously want to throw any of those remnants away. So what I did is I managed to squeeze out one more jumper and it was this little one here and this is the Ikati Jasmine Sweatshirt by Ikati Patterns. Now Ikati is a beautiful French pattern company. They have lots of gorgeous patterns for children and for women and the Jasmine Sweatshirt actually comes as a women's pattern and as a children's pattern. It's a very simple unisex sweatshirt. There is also a version for a sweatshirt dress and there is another version in the pattern for ruffles that you can put over the sleeves. Now, I didn't have enough fabric for ruffles. I definitely didn't have enough fabric for a dress, but I did have enough fabric to get a little color blocked jumper out for my daughter. The only thing I would say about this pattern is it does come up a little on the small side. My daughter is three and a half now and she's not a big three-year-old. She fits into three-year-old sized clothing and most of the patterns that I make for her now are aged three patterns, which fit her perfectly. I did size up though on this one. I made an age four size and it really fits her quite beautifully. There is a little bit of room for growth, not, not too much. So I'm definitely glad that I sized up or she would not have got very much wear out of this at all. Now you'll see I color blocked across the front here. I made one rosewood side and one indigo night side. And all I did for this was I cut my pattern piece in half. I added a centimeter seam allowance and then cut that pattern piece out twice. Now, again, for the back, I didn't have a lot of fabric left over. I definitely didn't have very much of this rosewood color left. So I ended up cutting this again in two pieces just to get the most out of my fabric and to make sure it was on the grain. I had little bits and pieces left over, so I cut the back in two parts as well, but I don't think you'd really notice. Then I got one sleeve out of the rosewood with the navy cuff and I got one sleeve out of the navy with the rosewood cuff just for a little bit of fun. I made the hem band from the navy cuffing and the neck band from the rosewood cuffing and she really enjoys wearing that over leggings. It's a lovely snuggly fabric and she really enjoys that one particularly when it's cold. So we have our own little matching sort of mummy and daughter sweatshirts. We actually have not worn these together on the same day yet. Maybe we need to do that and try and get a photograph, but um, it was really a lot of fun putting those together and I'm really glad to have used up all of that fabric. Now the last pattern I'm going to share with you briefly was a request from my daughter. She wanted a sweetie dress. Now I wasn't sure what she meant by that, so we had a look online and she had a very definite idea in her head about what she wanted. She wanted a dress with pockets, she wanted it to be a knit fabric with a twirly skirt and it had to have sweeties on it. So we set about having a look and she did in the end choose this gorgeous pink sprinkle fabric from Dalston Mill. It's a lovely knit fabric, nice amount of stretch and she has loved wearing this one. I think any day she's not at school, she's asking for her sweetie dress. So I'm really glad it's been such a hit. Now, I did use the Peony Patterns Periwinkle dress for this one. I absolutely love this pattern. Now, it comes with this gorgeous square neck. It does also come with a rounded neck option. It has these beautiful puffed sleeves. And then the skirt, I made her the circle skirt as per her twirly skirt requirements. But it also does come with a, a plain sort of straighter skirt and then a tiered skirt. So lots of different options for this dress. And then Peony Patterns are fantastic. They come in a size range from age 1 to 14. So this pattern is going to get a lot of use over the years, I think. It's just a really comfortable, easy to make knit dress with just a nice little feature to make it different from other little knit dresses that I've seen. And it has pockets. So on the Peony Patterns website, there is, I believe, a free pattern for putting inseam pockets into their dresses. And so I used that little pattern piece 
and made pockets. I've not put pockets in a knit dress before, but she was very insistent that that's what she required. And so I popped them in there and she's loved putting all sorts of treasures into those pockets. So that was my, one of my other makes this February was this Peony Patterns Periwinkle Sweetie Dress with pockets for my daughter. So thank you so much for watching today. I do hope you enjoyed seeing what I've been making in February. A few makes I'm very happy with, a few makes that perhaps weren't exactly what I was expecting, but that's sewing. We can't get it right all the time, and that's okay. If you are interested in purchasing a Serious Readers Light for yourself, I'll put all of the information in the description box below, and do use my code SR219 if you are interested in purchasing one of these lights for yourself. Until next week, I do hope you have a lovely week ahead filled with lots of happy sewing, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye! Bye.